Welcome back to the discussion of Chapter 2, Cell Structures and Functions, but this time we will focus on subtopic 2.3, Components of the Plasma Membrane. These are the learning objectives of this subtopic. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to show the structure of the plasma membrane based on fluid mosaic model. Besides that, students also need to be able to explain the structure of the plasma membrane and the functions of each of its components. Now let's begin. We will begin with discussing the fluid mosaic model proposed by Singer and Nicholson. Due to the restriction in my capability in producing good animations, I have provided a YouTube video link to help you better visualize the fluid mosaic model. I strongly recommend you to go and take a look at the video. The link of the video can be found in the description below. The fluid mosaic model of the plasma membrane explains that the plasma membrane is not static. This is very obvious when you watch a video of an amoeba trying to catch its prey. Fluid refers to the ability of the phospholipids and proteins that can be found in the membrane to move freely in the phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid molecules can move sideways or laterally, just like this. Or sometimes, it can do a flip-flop. However, proteins can only move laterally, just like this. Proteins cannot do a flip-flop. Mosaic refers to the scattered arrangement of proteins in the phospholipid bilayer giving the mosaic pattern. This is an example of mosaic. You can see a pattern of a butterfly, but the pattern is made up from the arrangement of tiles from different shapes and sizes. This is just like how different sized proteins scattered around in the phospholipid bilayer, giving it a mosaic appearance. There are four components of the plasma membrane. The first and major component is the phospholipid. Secondly, the membrane proteins. Thirdly, carbohydrates represented by the blue chains. And lastly, cholesterol, which is inserted in between phospholipid molecules of the same layer. Now let's have a look at each of the components in detail. The yellow molecule here is the phospholipid. The phospholipid makes up the main fabric of the plasma membrane. They are arranged in a bilayer arrangement. This means that the hydrophilic head of one layer will face the cytoplasm of the cell. Meanwhile, the hydrophilic head of another layer will face outside of the cell. The hydrophobic tail of both layers will face each other, as you can see. These chains here really representing the carbohydrates. They rise to the outside of the cell, playing role in cell-cell recognition. Due to this, we can use carbohydrate as the marker when deciding which side is the cytoplasm and which side is the extracellular matrix. Since the carbohydrate chains arise to this side of the plasma membrane, we can safely say that this side is the extracellular matrix, hence this side is the cytoplasm of the cell. When attached to membrane proteins, the carbohydrate is now known as the glycoproteins. However, if it is attached to the phospholipid, it is known as the glycolipid. These are the proteins. As we have learned earlier on from our discussion of the fluid mosaic model, we know that various proteins are scattered in the plasma membrane, forming a mosaic. As you can see, in this diagram, some proteins are fully inserted in the phospholipid bilayer, forming integral proteins. So this one and this one are integral protein. But take a look at this one. It is attached on the surface of the phospholipid bilayer. So therefore, we call it as peripheral protein. Membrane proteins perform a lot of different functions. The more familiar one to you would be transport. Transport proteins such as pore protein and carrier protein are very important in allowing things to move into and out of the cell. Next, they perform various enzymatic activities. If you have watched the video that I recommended, 
you would also see that proteins on the membrane involved in receiving signals from the outside world. This we call a signal transduction. In combination with carbohydrates, glycoproteins are involved in cell-cell recognition. This is very important for your white blood cell to recognize whether a particular cell is your own cell or a foreign cell. Next, membrane proteins are also involved in attachment to cytoskeleton, giving a cell a particular shape. Lastly, the membrane proteins of two adjacent cells will interact to keep the cells in place in intercellular joining. The last component of the plasma membrane that we will discuss is this molecule. This is a cholesterol molecule. Cholesterol molecule is a type of steroid, and as we have learned in chapter 1, we know that steroid is made up of four profuse rings. Steroid molecules is sandwiched in between phospholipid molecules of the same layer. It stabilizes the membrane by maintaining the fluidity of the membrane at different temperatures. At low temperature, cholesterol prevents the solidification of the membrane by preventing the tight packing of phospholipid molecules. Consider this image. At low temperature, molecules naturally want to close back to each other and solidify. Since cholesterol is inserted in between phospholipid molecules in the same layer, it prevents the phospholipid molecules from tight packing, hence preventing the solidification of the membrane. However, at high temperature, cholesterol reduces the fluidity of the membrane by restricting the phospholipid movement. Consider these images. At high temperature, phospholipid molecules will have high energy and move so fast, like this. When the temperature is high enough and the phospholipid molecules gain enough energy, they can move so fast until they escape the membrane. So therefore, the membrane will disintegrate. In the presence of cholesterols, however, the movement of the phospholipid molecules are a lot more restricted and controlled. So therefore, maintaining the integrity and keeping the membrane intact.